evening everyone and welcome to the Victor's Racing League, the F3 League. I'm your host with the most Mark. Oh, sorry. Sorry about that. I'll, you probably heard an echo at the background. I'll say it again. Good evening everyone and welcome to the Invictus Racing League, the F3 League. I'm your host with the most Mark. Tonight we're at the glorious, glorious race of Monaco. I hope you're all okay and well. Back live and exclusive for the second race of the Monaco Grand Prix. Now, I'll just try and do a bit of a catch up here, really, uh, with the standings and stuff. But there's a few drivers who are missing tonight, especially uh, Ferocious Dan, who's top of the pile uh, last week. <coughs> Pardon me. Excuse my burping. Um, that was bad timing. Uh, I believe Luke Bailey will be doing the first qualifying lap of the race tonight. So, uh, just trying to get everything set up and ready to go. Bit of a lightness there. So, Frosty Stan won last week's race at the Glorious Race of Australia. And then it was Luke Bailey who finished in second place after he did a fantastic podium stuff on his debut uh, season in F3 after he tried everything he could on F2 last season. And then BW Clyde, who returned into the uh, the racing crew, come back and got himself a first ever podium for a very long time. So well done to those three guys from last week. Snoop Dogg's not there tonight, so same with Frosh Stan. So this is a chance for everyone to get, I mean, Luke Bailey could have a chance of getting ahead of Frosh Stan if he can try and get on track here tonight. Especially with the drivers who are looking forward to it tonight. I will try and get to the Monaco Grand Prix quickly of the understanding of the track before we start. And we're about to start on the straight now. Yellow flag set to three. Luke Bailey is coming up to the first corner now at uh, St. Devante. They're coming up to up the hill of passing Berrivage in a minute now. They're coming up to passing Massanet corner now. They're in the famous casino car on the left hand side there. Straight down and coming to the first sector time of a 18.9 second, 18 .9 seconds. Uh, one of the drivers just let the Luke Bailey through to turn five, six, then seven now. Then coming to turn eight now. Coming to turn eight now. Coming to the tunnel section now, which is turn nine as of now. Then coming down the hill, it feels like a roller coaster ride here. And the chicane part, they've got to be careful here. Passing turn 10, then coming to turn 11 now. Then coming up to the back corner now, which is turn 12. Then coming to the unlucky turn, which is turn 13, 14. This is the uh, sh the, sh the, sh uh, the swimming pool section there. Passing 16, then 17, then 18 now. Uh, passing La uh, Raske corner, then Anthony Knox corner, turn 19, then, t uh, then straight on for the first DRS and only DRS straight. And the time to beat tonight is a 111.5 to beat. So, can anyone try and beat uh, Luke Bailey's time of a 111.5? Some of the drivers who were not there last week uh, were Hixie, Fly by Night is not there. Also, uh, well, Sab did not start. Shabs did not start. But I don't. Th is Shabs there? Shabs not there. Uh, Briggsy is not there. Mike was not there last week. So, Mike is in second place at the moment with 111.9 on the medium time. So that's a good time, to be fair. But I expect. To be fair, the soft mediums, I do expect at least five tenths difference between those two because this is a street track there's not much do a tire deck normally it's like a, a second gap f1 richard is in uh third place with 112.4 now f1 richard finished in seventh place last week a year flag set to one niger gash it did a 112.4 niger gash who did not finish last week hopefully he'll bounce back but he's doing a grand job here in third place with the has car so hopefully this will be a bounce back ability I really do, and I'm, I know I keep saying this, I'm not sure this is a, no, trying anything possible, but I really, really do hope that, that Nigel Gash does aim for the podium stuff at, at least once this season, because he's had so much bad luck. I really, like I, said, I really am rooting for him. I, I don't care. I just really do hope, root for him to do well this season. And I'm sure some of the drivers who have been there throughout the many seasons at 
at uh, Invictus Racing League, the F3 League, we'd like to see uh, Nigel Cash do so well. Brent Owens did a 113.3. Oh, Stephen did a 114.7, but that's on the hard tyre. Peter McClyde, who got third last week in the uh, the race at the Australian Grand Prix, he's in seventh at me with 117.1. So I'm sure he'll bounce back, try at least do well, unless he's going back into the pits. Oh, he's teasing us. I thought he was going to carry on, but he hasn't. He did not add much ERS mode there. Hicksy, but not that tricksy. It's Hicksy, 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 Hicksy. And then Brixie, but all that gigs is in the pit still. Tedge uh, and Dimac. Return of Dimac. There he is. Return of Dimac. There he is. Uh, good evening to everyone that's watching the stream so far. I hope you're enjoying it uh, so far. We've got 12 minutes left of the qualifying. 12 minutes left of the qualifying. Let's hope we'll see some more action going on at the moment here. 12.8 uh, from F1 Richard. Brown's in a 113.3. Depending on what Hicksy can do on his lap here. Yeah, flag set to three. Seen it from his point of view. That was Demac there. Just ahead. He must have. Oh no, Hicksy's lost a bit of his ERS mode, so hopefully he'll go enough to do. 112.4. But 112.4 from um, Hicksy. That's a good time to be fair. But comparing to what Luke Bailey's doing at the moment here, yellow flag set to one. So someone's, to, someone's gone really slow on sector one here at the minute. Hopefully he'll bounce back as quickly as possible. But synchronously, as uh, in 10th place of a minute, doing his lapping as of now. But trying to see what happens here. Yellow, yellow flag sector three. So something keeps going on at sector three. And I'm not sure why. But hopefully the guys are going to be absolutely be careful at the, sec at the chicane part there. Because you could lose so much time there. You could get a pelt. I was noticing last night in the Performance League, you do get penalties left, right and centre on this track. They've got to be absolutely careful here. Absolutely careful. Uh, what are we going to do? Saab's retired from the session. Saab has retired from the session. So something must happen there. A 112.4. Where's Saab? Has anyone gone near? Well, there's green flags there, so... Unless Saab, unless Saab's, d I don't know what's happened with Saab, but hopefully we'll find out sooner rather than later. Yellow flag set to one, so Saab is out of the court. Oh no! Brick Sibyl on Kixi. Is it part of the wall there? So he will try and have to do another lap in. Again, 10 minutes left of the qualifying so far. Uh, who else has not? Doing their lappings now. F1 Richard is doing his lapping now. He's since dropped down to sixth place after all the other drivers have got even quicker than himself there. Monaco, Monaco is one of those famous tracks for all F1 admirers here. This is one of the famous tracks that's been there, done that. Uh, one of the Haas cars. I don't believe that might be either Nigel Gas or Brennan. So we'll have to wait and see what happens there. F1 Richard, um, like I said, Invictus, uh, Monaco. Monaco track has been brought back to Invictus since 2017. So the first time it's been brought back into the racing calendar. Let's hope. Who's that? Was that Dimac? Oh, was that F Dimac slow down? F1 Richard had a faster lap than my compromises qualifying lap. I don't know if Dimac. I, I lost the controls from the, um, the selection, so I do apologise if the stewards did have a look at it from that point of view. Where's Luke Bailey? Luke Bailey's doing his lap in now. He's got... I don't know if he's gone even quicker. Oh, my God! That, that was... N oh, my days! Who's that just coming out of the pits? Hicksy! Oh, my God! Luke Bailey will be... At, his heart was in his mouth there when one of the cars just come out. They've got to be absolutely careful here. I'm sure the admins will let the drivers know about the pit exits, especially for the drivers who are still on the racing line here. Uh, so Luke Bailey, Brennan's has retired from the session. Luke Bailey's retired. Oh, Mike's got a five-place five grip penalty collision with Brennan's. So I'm not sure what happened there between himself and Brennan's there. I'm watching it from Dimac's point of view, so five seconds quicker. 
Hopefully we'll find out. There's been some year flags still going on. I reckon... Oh, the year flags was there. Because you had the green flags there. Everyone's just come out of the pits. DeMarc has done a 114. Nigel Cash! Oh! Brilliant stuff! Absolutely brilliant from Nigel Cash! I told you he needs to be bouncing back up into the podium stuff. I'll tell you what, what a lap there from Nigel Cash! What a lap! Brilliant stuff! Absolutely brilliant! Seven is 20 left of the qualifying. Can anyone try and beat Nigel Cash this time? It's going to be close. It's going to be close. Two turns off from uh, Luke Bay this time. Mike, Michael, I will not be surprised if Michael goes to the uh, soft tyres. Yeah, he's going for the soft tyres. Depending on what ever happens, I'm not sure what happened with Mike and uh, Brennons. They'll have to be checked after uh, on our screens to see what actually happened. I do notice a bit of lag last night. I'm hoping it's not going to be the same on the Monaco track tonight with some of the drivers because there's been a two drivers who are out of the race here already. So Mike is on, depending on what time he had on the first sector, I didn't see what happened there because I'll just try and see what Mike could do on the track here. So Mike's really going for it here, he's really going to try and beat Nigel Cash's time. But whatever happens here tonight, Mike will drop down five places from his qualifying position based on apparently a collision between himself and uh, Brennan. So I was speaking to Mike last, uh, was it yesterday? Mike was still trying to get to grips with the game. So he's just trying everything he can. Uh, brings a bit on that because he needs to speed up a little bit quicker because of Mike. Oh, Mike's going to the pits. Mike has gone back into the pits. Uh, oh, Stephen, I haven't mentioned about oh, Stephen. Oh, Stephen did a 130.9 on the hard tyres. He's going on the medium tyres. So, for the guys that are doing the, the softs, I would have gone for the softs to start off with or gone with the hard, like softs, and then go straight to the hards because the hards would last about over 30 laps. That's what I've seen last night. Ridiculous times, to be fair. Uh, good evening to everyone else joining the session. Oh, Stevens, seven turns quicker. So at the moment, he's do, he would hit a 130.2. Synchronised, he's moved up. Swan's moved up. Everyone, Richard moves up to third place with a 111.5. Two tenths off Nigel Gash. Can O. Steven try and beat Nigel Gash's time? He's done a 112.8. A 112.8. He's quicker. He's done a quicker time on the medium tyres. To be fair, if you're on the medium tyre, that is a good time. Uh, do, 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 do. Brilliant time from um, O oh, Stephen, but compared to what compared to himself and Mike's time, still nine tenths slower. But still, anyway, whatever happens here, if he starts in the mediums, he could go. Whatever happens here, someone's moved up. Briggsy has moved to uh, ninth with a 113.4. Beat the red clothes to the 113.8. Yellow flag set to two. Just watching Luke Bailey now doing his lapping. I just have to wait and see what happens. Here. Yellow flag set to two still. Sorry about the pause. I was just checking the messages to see if there was any incident uh, going on. Whatever happens here. One of the McLarens just laying one of the drivers through. Hopefully that doesn't compromise too much from Luke Bailey. So he just hit the wall there. Oh, he's got wide there. He might. Oh. I think that might have scared him. I think that might have scared him off the qualifying. Oh, what? Oh, Briggs is just laying some of the drivers through. He's got to be careful here because of the pit, because he might get a disqualification if he doesn't move quickly. I'm not sure what's happened there with Briggs. Oh. I think what I've been seeing as well. I don't know if this is true, but from what I saw, it looked like the it, the cars get stopped. So I'm hoping that's not. 
unless he's got no fuel left. I'm a bit, I'm a bit scop, um, gobsmacked here, but uh, I have to wait and see what happens here uh, with Briggs's car. But hopefully he'll carry on after a few times there. Synchronous is doing his lapping now. Ted is the only one who's not done a lapping on track at the moment. I know Sab hasn't done it, but he, something must happen with Sab earlier on. I'm not sure exactly what happened, but hopefully he'll bounce back in the race tonight. So seeing what Synchronous can do. They've got to be careful of the walls here because a little touch and they could just lose the wing. Oh no, 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 no! Crash! There's been a crash at the, at the swimming pool section. Synchronous hit the wall too early. He went to the corner far too early. And because of that, there's been yellow flags on sector three. That might compromise some of the driver's times here. Hopefully not, but I'm watching Terge's time now. It looks like he's still going. Might get 13. 113.8. 113.8 from Tedge. So he's going to try. Oh, he's hit, nearly hit the wall. Well, he's hit the wall a few times there. Hopefully he'll bounce back quickly. Peter McClyde is doing his lapping now. Yellow flag set us one and two now. Who's that? Is that, is that Stephen? Oh, Stephen's just laying some of the drivers through. Just watching Peter McClyde now do his... Uh, proper lapping now with one minute 20 left of the qualifying just interesting stuff here with the f3 stuff this is one of the greatest f3 uh, leagues shall we say of the Invictus Racing Leagues we'll just have to wait and see what happens here don't get me wrong I'm not only live tonight with the f3 league we also got uh, a team the legendary team who does uh, the commentary stuff with me on the performance league. He does the F1 stuff tonight, and I, I was told, I've been told that there's no commentary for the F2 tonight. So hopefully, uh, they'll hopefully um, Energy Dan will come back next week for round three. Oh, no, you guys going back into the pits, and I tell you what, it's the final countdown. Stop the fans of the Crystal Maze. Oh no! Mike's gone. Mike's hit the wall. Mike's hit the wall. He would have gone even quicker on his time. Where's Luke Bailey? Luke Bailey's doing his lapping now. He'll be the one that's closest to Nigel Cash. Can Nigel Cash get his first pole of the new season of the Invictus Racing League F3 League? Or can O Steven try and get into the party or something tonight? Can Luke Bailey. Can Luke Bailey spoil the party here of Nigel Cash? Oh, We'll have to wait and see what happens here, but Luke Bailey's really on fire, even though it's only two races of the brand new season. But the, I tell you what, Luke Bailey will need something here. Oh, Stephen moves up to fifth. Luke Bailey has pulled out. Nitro Gas has, has pulled, pulled, pulled. Nitro, Nitro. He has pulled tonight at the Invictus Race League, the F3 League. That's his first pole, I believe, for a very, very long time. I remember, unless that is the first ever one. Whatever happens here tonight, that's his first pole of the brand new season of F3 League. Well done to Nigel Gash. Oh, he deserves that. After all that hard work, I hope he can capitalise that by getting the fastest lap and the win tonight. I know, I know it's, I know, I know, but... Anything can happen. As long as you get a good start at the qualifying of the uh, the race itself, you never know what's going to happen there. So well done to, to Nigel Gash. Here are your short qualifying for the Monaco Grand Prix for the Invictus Racing League, the F3 League. You've got Nigel Gash is in first. Luke Bailey is in second. F1 Richard is in third. Mike is in fourth, but will drop down five places with the crash from, um, from Brennons. Oh, Steve is in fifth. Hicksy is in 6th, Synchronous is in 7th, Brennons is in 8th, 
Boy. De Mack is in ninth, but like I said, from uh, fifth to ninth, they'll move up. Briggs is in tenth, Peter McCoy is in eleventh, Tedge is in twelfth, and Saab is in the only uh, Saab is in thirteenth place. But Saab's the only one who's had no time at all because of the DNF. And I'll be right back, guys. I'll be right back. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I am just, I was just having a quick uh, Yorker break. I'm going to get some drinks in before we kick off. Nigel Gash, fantastic qualifying lap by two tenths of Luke Bailey's time with 1 minute 11.3. So he'll be on pole position at the start of the race. Can he try and capitalise on trying to get his first win and, and possibly the fastest lap of the race? Now, I, I don't know what the weather crew. It's going to happen here, but I can't wait to see what happens here. But Luke Bailey finishes in, he started off in second, Efron Richard is in third, oh, Steve is in fourth, Hicksy on his, um, uh, well, it's like his debut race, uh, type stuff, or come back, he didn't start last week. So Hicksy is in fifth, Synchronizer is in sixth, Brennan is in seventh, Dimac, return of Dimac, is in eighth, Mike is in ninth, Brixie is in tenth, Biddy McCoy is in eleventh. Serge is in 12th, Saab is in 13th place. Let's have a cracker of a race at the Monaco Grand Prix for the first time since 2017. Mm. And Invictus. We've got one light, two lights, three lights, four lights, five red lights. And we are go, go, go. Slow start from one of the Red Bulls at the background there. Can Nitrogas hold on for first? He holds on for first. Brilliant stuff. Contact at the little bit at the back there. Oh my god, two events! Two events situation! Crash! Crash between the Williams! And the, oh no, 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 no! There has been a contact between the Williams and the Red Bull on there, so there's been a massive crash. Bear in mind, yesterday there was no safety car. So the top four are pulling away. Sigurdos has lost his front wing. I'm not sure about all the others. They all tried to avoid. The carnage there from uh, from Hicks's car. Just see where Hicks's car. Hicks's car. Hicks has left the session. He's absolutely fuming after that. But I'd like to know what happened from that start there, or whatever happened there. Oh my God! Did Mac try to get, get ahead? But some of the drivers trying to get battle on here. 
Oh, I think it's the time for the session as well. So two drivers already out of the session. Out of the, oh my God. There's quite a few drivers who have lost a bit of their front wing now. Nigel Cash is pulling away from Luke Bailey now for eight tenths now so far. Mike's... Mike has just got dropped down from uh, third to eighth, I think. He's moved up to fifth after that. Whatever happens there. Saab. Saab's going to be closing in on Dimac now for seventh place. Yellow flag still. Sectors two and three. Synchronous has left the session now. Still. Oh, my God. Oh, no, no, no. No. What's going on? Saab and Dimac. Oh, no. Saab and Dimac. So, Dimac's out of the race now. Three drivers now are all out of the race. Of the Avita Race League, the F3 League. I'm not sure if there's an issue with the Monaco track. It's what's causing this to happen. That will probably need to be reviewed after tonight's race anyway, whatever happens here. But can Nigel Gas hold on to first and try and avoid Luke Bailey wherever, at whatever cost here? Nigel Gas is really pulling away. He needs to be careful here. F1 Rich is slowly trying to catch up to the top two drivers here. But this will be a good battle here between Nigel Gash and Luke Bailey. DRS is now enabled now for, this, for the race. Saab's got dropped down to ninth. Terge has moved up to eighth of the race. Yellow flag set to three. So something must happen there. Yellow, yellow flags are at sector three part there. At the moment, we've got a three-car battle here for the lead here. Nigel Gash is doing a fantastic job here. I know it's only three laps in, but he's doing a fantastic job. After what happened last week, I'll say this is going to be one performance of a hell, a hell of a time there. But he's got to be careful there because he hasn't got much ERS mode. And Luke Bailey's got plenty there, so he's trying to save ERS. But Luke Bailey's going to be right at the back. He might have a chance of the side by side. But Nigel Gash is just defended brilliantly there. So at the moment, this is a good battle here for the top two at the moment here. Nigel Gash uh, in first place. Luke Bailey is in second place, but he would extend the Drivers' Championship if he stays like this. Well, he would go first in the Drivers' Championship. Chance now for Luke Bailey. Can Luke Bailey have a chance on Nigel Gash? Nigel Gash will be a city dunk here. Oh! Nigel Gash just holds on. Nigel Gash just holds on. Needs to hold on there. Mike's got the fastest lap of the race with a 115.3. Fastest lap of the race. Well done to him. Fantastic stuff here. Luke Bailey will be thinking, I've got plenty of, of ERS mode here. Luke Nigel Gash needs to think of the ERS as much as possible here. Manic stuff here. If, it's especially, if you just joined us, ladies and gentlemen, three drivers are already out of the race. We start out with 30. We've got 10 remaining left. Uh, there's, there was a problem up the hill between Hixie and one of the Red Bull cars of Synchronosity, I believe. And Synchronosity, who hit the wall just after the uh, chicane, well, I think it was after the after this part here on turn 12. Yeah, turn 12. He hit the wall and lost his front, uh, front wheel, I believe. So he's retir retired out of the race. Then Dimac, side by side with Saab, he's out of the race as well. So Dimac is out of the race as well. Uh, oh, Steven has got a three-second time penalty for multiple warnings. Didn't want that at all. He did not want that at all. Nigel Gash is doing a fantastic job. He needs to hold on. He needs to hold on. Oh, Steven's pitted. Oh, Steven is pitted. I will not be surprised if he goes for the hearts. Yes, he's gone for the hearts. He's going all the way to the end. As long as he doesn't hit the wall, he's not going to pit any longer. As long as he keeps it out of the out of the wall and keeps it on track. To be fair, though, the heart is the better tyre for this track. I don't know why, but it's it's so much better. If you're on the softs, it's quicker to get out quicker. But obviously, the tyre wear is absolutely not very good around here. But we might have a few battles going on here. We've got the top three still, which I'm watching at the minute. And also we've got Terge and Brixey, but then at Gixie in sixth and seventh respectively. Might watch that in a minute here. But depending on what happens here between Luke Bailey and F1 Richard and Nigel Gash. 
This is some beating here. Nig oh my God, Luke Bailey's really at the back of Nigergash. This is a chance now for Luke Bailey. Nigergash will be thinking, what do I need to do? He's pulling away. He's got to be on the faster Erasmo. So Nigergash is doing a brilliant, brilliant job. Fantastic stuff here. Lap six, he needs to hold on. Now with the tyre wears, now I, I predicted last night, I predicted probably about 21 to 23 laps of the hard tyres, 18 laps of the mediums and 15 laps for the softs. That's completely shot yesterday because so, a few people did 30 laps. I say that again, two people have done 30 laps of the hard tyres. That's why I think Steve is going to go probably go even longer than ever before. Brings the that kicks his pit in, so Ted just moves up to sixth place. Chance now for Luke Bailey. Luke Bailey's doing everything possible. He's doing. They go a bit. Oh, a little bit of contact, but chance. Luke Bailey side by side. Nigel Gash hit the wall. Oh no, Nigel Gash. As, as Nigel Gash lost a bit of his front wing, I can't see from that angle there. Yes, he has. He's lost a bit of his front wing. I would not be surprised if he pits. Yes, he pits. And he'll probably pit for the hard tyres tonight. Because, to be fair, if you do softs, hards, that's it. That, that's your race. That's perfect, whatever happens here. But if Nigel Gash can try and avoid the wall and try and get a good battle here, he'll do well tonight, to be fair. He'll do a fantastic job. So at the moment here, F1 Richard is closing in on Luke Bailey now for the top two. That's the only battle we've got so far, guys. I'm sorry if you, there's not much action going on. I will go through some of the battles. Oh, Nigel Gash has just... Well, Ted has just moved up to fifth. Nigel Gash is still in the pits. Oh, he's just got out now. So this might be make or break between Nigel Gash and now Stephen. Bear for Richard, who finished in seventh place, I believe. Last week at Australia, Luke Bailey's got a three-second time penalty. Luke Bailey's got a three-second time penalty for multiple warnings. He didn't want that at all. He did not want that at all. We've got another battle going on between Mike and Brennons for... Ooh, I might go for that one, actually. Mike must have hit the wall because he was a second behind. Uh, sorry, Brennons was a second behind Mike. But now it's like five tenths now, so Mike must have hit the wall. Oh, he's hit the wall again. Mike's going for the pit. Oh, Mike's going for the pit. So now, chance now for um, F1 Rich to try and get at least a chance to try and close in on Luke Bailey. Luke Bailey's got a three-second time penalty. The first, I think there's, I think there's a frame FPS issue with Monaco. Yellow flag set to three. Yeah, flag set to three. So something must happen there from whatever happens here. But Nigel Gash, oh, he's on the hard tyres, but it looks like on my screen he's on the yellow tyres. So, does anyone slow it down? So, so far in this race, oh, F1 Richard closed in on Luke Bailey. Needs something. Nigel Gash moves up to fourth. Oh, what's happened between Nigel Gash and Tej? Oh, Tej just lost a bit of his front wing. I'm not sure if, it, if Tej just let Nigel Gash through. At that point, he probably think, well, there's no point, because he's lost a bit of his front wing, and he's trying everything he can. I'm not, I will not be surprised if Tej goes for the hard tyres to do 30 laps there, so I will not be surprised there, to be fair. But it'll be interesting stuff here. Saab could be closing in on Brixie, but that kicks in a moment here or two. I feel sorry for Saab. He did. He was doing a really good. Um, like I say, he was really unlucky with the qualifying. But I'd like to know what exactly. Oh my God! There was Devry. I think that was Devry from Brixie's car. Yes, it is. Brick Devry from Brixie's car after turn 12 into turn 13. So he'll lose the straight line speed, but this is this will be a best opportunity here for Saab to get some decent points in to move to eighth place. 
But Brixley will be absolutely struggling with those with that uh, when turning in on a few of the corners here tonight. <coughs> Excuse the burping. Uh, we've got lap nine or 39 of the Victor's Race League, the F3 League. But like I said, this is an absolute mad start at Monaco. Back after 2017 for the first time since 2017. And I'll tell you what, oh, Luke Bailey and F1 Richard have pitted. Luke Bailey's gone for the medium, ti uh, medium tyres. Same with F1 Richard. They're going for 20. I'll be very surprised if they do 29 laps in the medium tyre. But Nigel Gash will be laughing now because. Well, Luke Bailey's just got ahead. Nigel Gash is just a little bit behind. But, but bear that in mind, Luke Bailey, F1 Richard. They probably would have to pit for the softs if, the, if they make a mistake or the medium tyres shot at the, near the end of the race. So far, Nigel Gash, Nigel Gash is impressing me tonight. Same with Luke Bailey again, he just keeps on going. He still hasn't won a race, I know it's the second race of the season, but he hasn't won a race yet. He got second last week. So. Interesting stuff here. Brixie, oh my god, Saab. Saab's closing on Brixie now for seven and eight, respectively. Brixie struggling with the damage from Wink. Chance now for Saab. Oh, I thought Saab would have gone for the inside, but I think he played it, played his cards right here by playing it safe. Oh, Stephen. Oh, Stephen closing in on Mike now under the tunnel. Mike, what's happened to Mike? Has Mike lost a bit of his front wing? Yes, he has. He's lost a bit of his front wing on the left-hand side. So I think that's why. Saab could have a chance on Briggsy now. Four, eight, place. So it's seventh place. Madness stuff here tonight. Absolutely madness stuff. We're on lap 11, 39, RB Victor's Trans League, the F3 League. Please make sure you follow and subscribe to like and follow of the, the channels tonight of the Twitch. Also, not only we're live tonight, there's the F1 league tonight uh, on uh, Briggs has gone into the pits now. Same with Mike, good for the pits. So I wouldn't have been supposed to go for the, the hard tyres. Mike's gone for the medium tyre. Mike has gone for the medium tyre. So whatever happens, he will have to pick again because that's the same tyre as what he started on. Well, it's the same type, same type of tyres that he started on. So, absolutely manic stuff here. Whatever happens here tonight, and unfortunately, all the drivers are all spread out now. So, I'll go through all the drivers now. Brenos is in the lead. Um, so fantastic drive from him. This is a great drive from the Haas team. So they're really up for it here. Luke Barry's got the fastest up of the race with one thirty four point three. So one minute. 34? That's a bit harsh. 1 minute 14.3. I do apologise, Luke Bailey. That's not the real t uh, 134 is not the real time. I'm losing the plot here. I just saw a 3 and I just added it by accident. So Luke Bailey is 5 seconds behind uh, Brennons. Brennons will need to pit anyway. So I, I will not be surprised. It depends on how far the medium tyres can go. Same with Peter Bay Clyde. He's in 9 laps of the, the uh, medium tyres. Uh, let's have a look at the uh, the the leader. Now, normally it's like 25 seconds from the from the, the gap. So if if Luke Bailey can try and aim for another 16 16 to 21 seconds, he'll be fine to do another another free pit stop overhead of Nigel Gash. Ted just got a three second time penalty for multiple warnings or corner cutting. But Tej, since seven players in the minute, I will have a look at the uh, the stops. So Brennos is the only one who's is only sorry. Brennos is the only one who's not done a stop whatsoever. Nigel Gas has got three second time penalty for multiple warnings. Someone's hit the wall. Someone's hit the wall at sector three. I'm not sure who that is. I'm just trying to see who it could be. Oh, Nigel Gash. Oh, Nigel Gash has gone to the pits again. 
So he must have hit the wall, so he would lose out bits. He's going to do 26 laps in the meantime. To be fair, if if the hard tyres can last up to 31 laps, I will not be surprised if the mediums can last 29. Uh, sorry, 26 to 29 laps. So Nigel Gash will be will need to be on fire here tonight now. To try and get some. Um, you've got to be absolutely spot on with the uh, the concentration around Monaco. You just insane stuff here. We on I can't believe we're on lap 13 of, of 39. So madness stuff here tonight. Mike's got a three second time penalty for multiple warnings. He didn't want that at all. He did not want that at all. Luke Bailey could be the one to extend. Uh, well, whatever happens here, he will be the, the, the new leader of the Drivers' Championship. Um, for us, Stan, if he's watching, good evening. Uh, I know he's having a good break in Spain and I'm sure he'll have a, he's had a fantastic break and watching it live and exclusive um, so if you're there, hello mate um, I'll be having a good time and I hope we'll see you back either next week or the week after whatever happens here, if he, I think he is coming back next week I think it's just probably this week he's in Spain but yeah, whatever happens here I'm sure he'll bounce back in the, the league stuff anyway, so I was thinking Stan Bren Brenos is in the lead so far, but he will have to pit. So whatever happens here, Luke Bailey will um, go into first place unless Luke Bailey makes a mistake. But it looks like he's on fire at the moment here. One point five seconds, one point six, one point three. Make your mind up here, Lukey. Oh, in second place. So he's doing everything he can to try and close in on Brennos. Brennos' tyres must be absolutely shot now to start off with. So, fair play to Brennos. He's just trying everything he can to, to last those tyres. Luke Barry is closing in so much time now. He's under a second now. So I'm going to watch it from his point of view here. The, now, F1 Richards in third place uh, with an 11 second gap. He'll need to try and do something. He must have pitted it again. Oh, Stephen was up to fourth place, so fair play to him. Um, to pit really early in the race and try and get ahead. Well, whatever happens here, he, he's, there is a quite a bit of a gap um, to catch up to everyone, Richard. But whatever happens here, it could be, it could be insane stuff. could be madness stuff. We will see a, a shock finish. We'll have to wait and see. On lap 15 and 39 of the Victor's Race League, the F3 League tonight. Oh, Stevens 10 laps in. Hicks, well, uh, Billy McClyde moves up to 10th place. Hicksy has retired all earlier on in the race. If you joined, Hicksy, Dimac, uh, and Synchronizer have all retired um, due to issues from the first few laps of the race. Oh, look, Bally's right at the back now of Brennan. So I'm going to watch it from his point of view now. Luke Bailey doing a brilliant job here. He'll be the driver of the season if it, the way he's driving at the minute. He really is on fire. I'm sure he's bounced back here. So good evening to the guys who have just joined the session. Luke Bailey's right at the back of Brennan's now. I will go through. Uh, Nigel Gash is closing in on uh, Saab for fifth place. So I might watch Nigel Gash in a minute. Send your comment, guys. Oh! Brings him along. I guess he's got a three-second time penalty for multiple warnings. He didn't want that at all. He did not want that at all. Nigel Gash could have a chance on uh, Sat now. Well, might go back to Luke Bailey because they, they, they were near to the... Uh, the uh, pit straights. Yeah, they're going for it now. Going to watch it. Oh my god, I'm going to watch it from his point of view now. Can Luke Bailey try and get past Brennan? Go for the inside. What a move. What a move there from Luke Bailey. Is he the wall there? Has he lost from wing? Yellow flag set to two. Madness stuff here. Ah, good evening to Clarky. How you doing, mate? You all right? 
He says, Brenos is my hero. What a performance. Yeah, so far, he's doing a brilliant job here, to be fair, Brenos. Bear in mind, he's the only one who's not done a pit yet. So, depending on what tyre wear he'll go for, he will need to think about it because at the moment, whatever happens, he will probably finish in the podium unless so Stephen can pull a rabbit out of the hat here. Mike's got a three second time penalty for multiple warnings. Nigel Gash is the one that's going to be closer to Saab. Uh, but yeah, Clark, if you want to follow, subscribe. Um, be fantastic stuff if you can. We're watching all the F3. Um, for all the F3 live and exclusive stuff. Mike has retired from the session. Mike's retired. What's happened to Mike? I'm going to watch it from B-Ray Clyde's point of view here. There's got to be yellow flags. Oh, they're gone now. I wonder if he hit, caught the wall by accident here. Yeah, he must have caught the wall there. Or he must have retired in the pits. Looks like he's just retired there, but... Peter McCart could be closing in on Briggs and Giggsy in eighth place. But I want to watch this battle here between Saab and Nitrogas for the run in here. Nitro needs to do something here, needs to pull something out of the bag here. He was, he was on pole for um, at the start of the race. Um, he had a little bit of front wing damage at the, uh, during the race, but that's why his bounce dropped down six, six place. So I'm just going to do a comparison of the leader time now. So Briggsy, Biddy McLeod and Hicks, and, well, Briggsy and Biddy McLeod, they've already been lapped. Oh, same with Tej, they've already been lapped. So Norwich Gash is in sixth place, so Luke Bailey is on course for his uh, first win of the season, but his second podium of the season. So that's fantastic stuff there from Luke Bailey. We're only on lap 19, it feels so long, the Monaco Grand Prix. Depending on whatever happens here, I'm not sure this is going to carry on. Uh, whatever happens here, but oh, I need that drink. So can Luke Bailey hold on for um, his first ever win? Bear in mind that F1 Richard is 10 seconds. When Brennan's pits in, it'll be roughly about 10, 10 and a half seconds between himself and Luke Bailey. But bear in mind, Luke Bailey has got a three-second time penalty. So as long as he, as long as everyone reaches him within the seven-second gap, he'll be, he'll be laughing himself. To be fair, as long as everyone reaches, hasn't got a penalty as well. Brennan's is pitted now, so it'll be interesting to see what tyre wear he's going for. He'll need to go for the hards. Yeah, he'll go for the hards. He's going for the hards, but. Whatever happens here, he'll guarantee a podium unless O Stephen pulls something out of the bag. But Niger Gas is slowly trying to close in on Saab now. Saab do, has done a, re a brilliant recovery drive here uh, to fifth place. Considering what happened between uh, himself and Dimac, Saab's doing a brilliant job here to get into uh, fifth place. I'm just going to have a look at the fastest lap of the race with 114.3 from oh, from Luke Bailey but yes yeah, Saab's the biggest move so he'll be one of the drivers to watch out for on driver of the day so I always look at the guys who I always pick a driver that's done the biggest movers or the biggest recovery drive so Mike's let the sense Saab's got a three second time penalty for multiple warnings Nigel Gass has already had a three second time penalty whatever happens here Yellow flag set to two. Yellow flag set to two. So t I think Ted was just laying one of the drivers through. I think that was Brennan's laying the driver through. So Brennan's, who's on course on fire for his uh, his first podium of the season. 
his first podium. I remembered a few seasons ago where he was on dominant form and he was like winning races left, right, centre. But as soon as he went on to like no assists, he dropped down the pecking order. But now it looks like he's on fire. The Haas team of, are the, the team of the, the race so far. Um, well, the team of the race so far. So Peter McClough has got a three second time pound of multiple warnings. Can Nitrogas do something to try and get back into uh, fifth place? Bear in mind, Saab. Bear in mind, Saab will need to pit again. So would Nitrogas just just try and hold on behind him? Try at least attempt to like do as much pot tie uh, tie weight as possible. But bear in mind, the air flag set to two again. So something must happen again. Clark, he says, come on, Brennan's. He says, game face, bro. He's like Clark, he's number one Brennan's fan. Oh, Brennan's his number one fan. So, like I said, Clark is doing everything he can to try and encourage Brennan's to win, uh, well, to at least hold on for the podium stuff tonight. But bear in mind, there's 17 laps. Can Luke Bailey, F1 Richard, last 17 more laps on the medium tyre? Bear in mind, Brennan's pitted on lap eight, 18 laps of the medium tyre. Saab's on that optimal part now. So we'll not be surprised if Saab pits soon. No, he doesn't. He's still going. Nigel Gash is right at the back. Could he have a chance of the side-by-side -side moment? This is close. Oh, my God. Nigel Gash could have a chance. But he's doing everything. He's getting there. He's getting there closer and closer now. So Saab's tyres must be absolutely shot now. So have to wait and see what happens here with Nigel Gash and Saab here at the moment here with the fifth and sixth respectively. Uh, run down of the pecking order. We've got Luke Bailey is in the lead in first place. We've got F1 Richard is in second place. Brennan's is doing a fantastic job. He's in third place. Oh, Stephen as well. Oh, Stephen, um, who pitted really early for the hard tyres. He's going to go all the way to the end. Bye. Oh. So he's done a grand job. Saab's done a brilliant drive to recover anyway. So he's done a brilliant job to fifth place. Nigel Gash is in sixth at the moment here. Terge is in seventh. Briggs is in eighth. Uh, Biddy McClyde is in ninth. Uh, Higsey, Mike, Dimac and Synchronously have all retired or all had the DNFs in this race. Briggs has got a three second time penalty for multiple warnings. He didn't want that at all. He did not want that at all. What can Nigel Gash do to get past Saab? Unless Nigel Gash is just playing the waiting game and just pounce at the moment here. Look, this nearly. Because Monaco is a, it's a tight... I wasn't going to swear that. Monaco is one of those tightest, uh, tightest tracks that you ever see. We might have two battles going on between Saab, Nigel Gash and Brixie and Tej for seven, six, seven, sorry, five, six and seven and eight respectively. Just try and see if Nigel Gash can try and attempt to get past Saab, who's been at the back for at least five laps, surely. It might be more than five laps. But that was just madness stuff here. Uh, oh, I thought he was going for it there. Briggs is trying to get right at the back of Tej, but no chance whatsoever there. So here's Nigel Gash trying to close in on Saab now. The problem is, people, the, the cars, they get out so quickly. They don't get it spot on. When you don't get it spot on, you lose so much time, you you lose a second now and again. Uh, Brixie. Briggs is right at the back tail of Tej. Now, so we're going to watch this little bit of battle unless unless Nigel Gash can somehow get past Saab for fifth place. We're on lap 25-39 of the Invictus Racing League, the F3 League. 
I hope you're enjoying the stream so far. And like I said, I'm absolutely delighted. Um, oh, Briggsy. I don't know if Ted's just uh, lost the breaking point there, but Briggsy nearly went to the back of uh, Ted. So Ted got a bit of a running on the DRS straight, so he's doing everything he can, uh, Tom. He's doing a brilliant job to hold on to seventh place. Uh, Gash, Nigel passing the swimming pool section now. As long as they don't hit the walls around here. One of the cars is ahead of Saab. I think that might be one of the... Uh, I'm not sure which, one, which car that is, but Saab is doing a brilliant job again. 14 more laps. 14 more laps. Can, all right, here's a question for you, Clarky, if you're still there. The guys are on the meme tyres that are roughly between 15 and 22 laps. Do you think they they would get no Oh no, no, it's a gash! He had the dirty air, and because of that, he lost a bit of his front wing again. Oh, no, it's a gash. Bear in mind, though, if he pits now, if he pits now, he'll still be fine. He'll still stick with six, but he did not want that at all. He did not want that at all, so he will have to pit again. Oh, he's lost a bit of his front wing again. Well, he's actually lost the whole front wing, so you've got to be very, very careful here. So I'm just going to go full pouch through there. Uh, one of the Mercedes cars, Peter McClyde. Peter McClyde, who did a brilliant race last week, is having not one of those great races here tonight, so hopefully he'll bounce bounce back next week uh, at uh, Spain I believe. is it Spain is it Spain I think it's Spain no France sorry I do apologise Nigel Gash is in the pits now so I'm going to watch Brixie and Tej for this battle here Nigel Gash I will not be surprised if he goes for the soft tyres oh well, he's, he's playing it safe I don't blame him to be fair I think I think that was a good choice there to be fair from Nigel Gash but well, whatever happens here, Nigel Gash has done a brilliant job in the top. I think he would have been liked to have been in the top three at least. But but whatever happens here tonight, he, he has done a brilliant job, Nigel Gash. Um, it's just unlucky that with the the wall sections there, Saab's done a brilliant job to move up to fifth. Uh, oh, Stephen as well pitted really early and avoided all the traffic. And just to hold on in fourth, he's got like a bit of a gap between himself and Saab. But can Saab try and close in on O'Steven before before the interval? We'll have to wait and see what happens here. But I do apologise, guys, if I keep on burping because like I said, I had to eat something quick before we start the stream. So I have to get my breath back. Anywho, but. Uh, Saab's pitted, so 23 laps on the meme tyre is the optimal pit. F1 Richards got a three second time penalty for multiple warnings. So Clarky, do you think, do you think the medium tyres would last long? Or do you think that would be a bit of a, a bit of a, a tough ask, shall we say? Well, that's Just watching Brixie try and close in on Tej now for seventh place now. But like I said, if you just joined, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're on lap 28-39. And at the start, uh, Nodjagash, who polled at the qualifying, he, he has dropped down to sixth place. There was a manic start. There was a manic start from some of the drivers here. And because synchronously, Dimac, Hixie and Mike, that all four drivers are out of the race already of the the Monaco Grand Prix. I think some of the drivers are not happy with Monaco in general. I'm not sure if this track will be coming back next se next season. So we'll have to wait and see what happens here. But I do apologize for saying we'll have to wait and see what happens. 
Um, because there's not been much bows going on side by side with the tuna beds. I thought Hicksy he did the two in the bed situation between himself and synchronously. Nigel Cass is still the fastest up of the race with 114.1, so he's going to be close to Saab in the next few laps. Saab's already pitted um, a lap ago, but I will not be surprised if Nigel Cass can try and get as close to Saab as, pos as much as possible. So Briggs is doing, ev doing everything he can. Briggs is doing exactly the same as Swab with Nigergas and Saab. Saab's just defending, not um, against Nigergas, but Ted just do defending against uh, Briggs, but not that Giggsy. Just seeing what happens here um, in this situation. Ted just doing a brilliant job to hold on in seven. Briggs needs to do something to get past Tedge but Tedge, F1 Richard pits, F1 Richard has started to pit will he go for the soft tyres soft tyres it is so this will be last minute last minute survival of the fittest, oh my god Briggsy had a good run out of, of the uh, swimming pool section there Tedge on the hard tyres, Briggs is on the medium tyres. Tedge trying to do everything he can, but Briggs, for luck's sake, Briggs thought he had the chance when he was like, under four tenths, but not anymore now. Brails moves on to second place now. Now, here's an interesting part. Do you think Luke Bailey will pit now since F1 Richard has started to pit? Well, whatever happens, Luke Bailey will get ahead of F1 Richard if he pits, starts the pits now. No, he doesn't. He doesn't pit. So he's going for, he's going for another nine more laps. I'll be very, very surprised if he can go all the way to the end. But Brennan's has got fresher hard tyres. The hard tyres is the one to watch here. Oh, Steven's done 25 laps already. Sab's done the fast lap of race with a 114 flat. But we might have a couple of battles going on here. Briggsy and Tedge, uh, 1.2. Nigergash and Saab in a minute will be two second gap. So yeah, fantastic stuff here. But Briggsy is doing everything possible to try and get past Tedge, the old guard, the old veteran, I always call him. I just call him old veteran. And Locke said, if, if you don't remember, I met him at Silverstone a few weeks ago. Um, fantastic bloke. Um, after all the years that I've known him, like 11 years, I can't believe that. And uh, met for the first time. It fan it absolutely fantastic bloke. And we had a good laugh, good laughs now, now and again at uh, Silverstone. But I know his race craft. I know what Ted can bring into the F1 um, into the F1 races he's got that charisma charisma? yeah he's got that charisma he's got that experience of defending and watching all those experiences to try and defend for all his life but he is a he's a tough guy to beat on track but fair play to Tedge and fair play to Sab who's holding on for their places here after the charge of like Nigel and Briggsy respectively. So at the moment here we've got Luke Bailey in first place. We've got Brennan's is in second place. Boy. And for Richard is in third. But he could close down Brennan's now if he can try and keep it going. F uh, oh Stephen. Oh Stephen's in fourth. Uh, Saab's in fifth, Nigel Gash, who I'm watching at the minute now, is in sixth. Terge is in seventh, Briggs is in eighth, Bidwin Clyde is in ninth. Hixie, Mike, Dimac, and Synchronosity have all retired or DNF'd from the session. So, interesting stuff here. Lap 32 39. Can anyone try? Would there be a last minute 
ditch from... Well, Luke Bailey will be thinking, if I pit now, I will lose the lead. But to be fair, he might lose out to F1 Richard, who's going to be on rapid fire, whatever happens here. Because F1 Richard is going to be trying to close in on Brennan's, but... Oh, Brennan's has got a three-second time penalty for multiple warnings! Absolutely manic stuff here. Manic, manic stuff. So, so far, so good for... Uh, Luke Bailey, so Reynolds will be will be on the edge of his seat. I think F1 Richard has got a penalty, unless I'm mistaken. But F1 Richard will have it. Oh, Briggsy. Briggsy just a little bit of a cut of the corner there. I don't know if that was trying to avoid the last minute breaking, so to say, but he's doing everything he can to try and get past Ted, but he, he does not know what he needs to do. Lap 33 of 39. So far, Luke Bailey, Brennan's and F1 Richard. If it stays like this, they will be the ones to be on the podium stuff. And I don't think oh, Stephen will catch up to F1 Richard anytime soon with 40, 45 seconds nearly. And um, Peter McClive has got a three second time penalty for multiple warnings. He didn't want that at all. He did not want that at all. Nigel Gash closed in on Saab again. So far, like I said, there's not been... The only closest time that Nigel Gash did was just a lap before he had the... He had the break... Well, I think he was on the lap before he, uh, he lost his front wing and then he had to drop back and then he bounced back to try and catch up onto Saab, who's on pressure with medium tyres. But Nigel Gash will be on a lap quicker Sorry, a lot older medium tyres compared to Sabs. But the uh, Haas car of Nigel Gash is just trying to pounce at any opportunity here. But Sab and Nigel Gash have done a fantastic battle here. And also Tedge and Brixey. But the story the story of the day is it's like there was this mad start uh, from, from up the hill. Oh my god, Sabs, Sabs just got a little bit slow there. So Chaz now for Nigel Gash. Contra there between Nigel Gash and Saab. But but luckily Saab still holding on. Same with Nigel Gash. Nigel Gash hasn't got any front wing damage. So that's good news for um on there. Whether uh Briggsy again trying to close in on uh, Ted. But the, lost a bit of momentum there from Nigel Gash on Saab. Lost the breaking point at uh on uh, before Sab's car. Brixie was nearly right at the back of Tedge's car just before the DRS straight now. So the DRS straight is coming up now. So watching Brixie's car. Chance now, but Tedge got the DRS as well. Oh, Brixie. Oh no, Brixie. Brixie's lost to be of his front wing. I'm not sure if that was both front wings. Like the side panel part. So Monaco is just just absolutely livid with, with majority of the drivers here tonight. Nigel Gas is going to try and do another chance here. Here's a discussion for you guys. Do you think there'll be a um, would you like to see another DRS straight? Like up here. Would you ever like to see another DRS option at Monaco? Because to me that that DRS straight there is still not useful, to be fair, because if you, if you don't get a good exit, the guy that's already got out already ahead of you will have a push out easily. Like, look, another DRS straight. If the Monica, if the tunnel section was a little bit straighter, I think, yeah, you would have had a second DRS straight here to have another run out. But... I think it's a bit too much there. So, so far we've got three three to four laps remaining of the uh, if it's just League, the F3 League. Luke Bailey is holding on with those medium tyres. He's holding on to those medium tyres at the moment here. 
26 laps on the medium tyres. His tyres would be absolutely shot. But bear in mind, there's 12 second gap between himself and F1 Richard. Briggs has got a three second time penalty for multiple warnings. He didn't want that at all. Yeah, flag set to two. Yeah, flag set to two. That might be F1 Richard. Oh no, that I do apologise, that is not F1 Richard. So someone had F... Uh, someone had F2. Someone's had a sec... Uh, I can't even say it anymore, I'm not even losing, I'm losing the plot here. Someone's had yellow flagged on sector 2. So, interesting stuff. Nigel Gas is still trying to close in on Saab for 5th uh, place. Unless Saab gets another penalty, I don't think Nigel Gas can try and get past him. Uh, Saab's the biggest mover, so he'll be the one of the drivers to be on my drive of the day, based on the positions that he's moved up from 13th, well, start at the back of the grid, to 5th place, some fantastic stuff. Oh, Steven in 4th place, that's a brilliant drive from him. That's the best, this, this is going to be the best season he's ever had, oh, Steven, and I'll guarantee that. Oh, Steven, Brennan and Luke are the only ones who have only done the one stop around uh, around Monaco. I'll tell you what, one lap, there'll be two laps remaining. Two laps remaining, but where's Brennan's? Brennan's could have, a, as long as he can knock off three seconds, as long as he can try and get within three seconds, Peter McClough's got a five second penalty for corner cutting. Five second penalty for corner cutting. Uh, from leader, so, so O'Steve oh, between Luke Bailey and O'Steve, oh, they're the only ones who have not been lapped. Yeah, flag set to, who was that? That was one of the Red Bulls. Was that the leader? Yeah, it was, it was Luke. Oh, Brennan's, this could be a battle of this the end race. Luke, has Luke lost his front wing? Yes, he has, he's lost a bit of his front wing on the left-hand side. Oh, my days, I've been waiting for this moment here for the top two. Oh, Steve has left the session. Oh, no. Can he get back into the race? Luke Bailey could... Luke Bailey's got one more lap left. Can Brennan spoil the party here? I'm trying to... Oh no, he hit the wall, Luke uh, Brennan. Has that compromised his lap? No, his front wing is still intact. He's still, he's still intact. Six turns... Oh no! Oh no, 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 no! 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 No, I'm going to get back in. Um. Oh, no. I don't even know what happened. And I've just been kicked on the last lap. Where it was all going to be exciting stuff. And I think everyone else... Yeah, Al Steven says kicked. Everyone else... Has everyone else got kicked? Oh my days. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. Um... I would have liked to have seen that battle between Luke Bailey and uh, Brennan's, but I'm not sure what's going to happen with the... Uh... Yeah, it looked like oh, Stephen left the session and everyone else... Um... I wonder if the standings will be kept as it is from lap 38 onwards but if it does I'll have to probably have to pick out got kicked uh, 
Uh, I'm not sure what to do. I'm a bit speechless. I don't know whether to pick, get the drivers in to talk about it or not, but uh, I'm a bit speechless here. Yeah, there's about 38 laps of it. So if you just join, ladies and gentlemen, all the F3 drives have been kicked 30 on the 38th lap. So on the 38th lap, we've all got kicked. I think since O. Steven got kicked, everyone else has got kicked. So, um,. I think it's fair to say, even though I would have bring out the drivers into the uh, commentary box, I still think we're not sure whether th this race will be classified as the result or it will have to be a rerun. I don't know, but we'll have to wait and see for the admins to decide on that one. But it was getting so exciting on the last lap of the race, or the 38th lap. It would have, well, it was technically the last lap of the race um, when I was watching it from Brennan's point of view. But that would have been a great finale between Brennan's and um, Luke Bailey. Can Luke Bailey keep that result there? I'm just going to try and find out if. Um, So, I'm sorry about this, guys. I'm not 100% sure if if the, the standards will be the same. Um, I'm gutted with that because that would have been a classic race. And unfortunately, I can't show the, the stewards because that's what happened. Uh, oh, Steven says everyone got kicked, Matt. Oh, okay, no worries. Um, I'm not going to invite the drivers from the top three at the time because of, until... Um, until the class, until the, unless there is a rerun or classification. So, um, I think for fair to say, until we find more information, and unfortunately, I'm not. I don't know. I doubt I'll be here next week uh, for the F3 uh, commentary because of personal reasons. So hopefully, I'll be back in two weeks' time. All being well, but other than that, it's going to be a. Um, I'm going to have to stop the stream because it's a shame. I'll do my final bits. Uh, if you just joined, there was a Nigel Gash who got pole on his. I think that was his first ever pole, or has been a pole for a very long time. But that that was just the catalyst of what I wanted to see him battling for the top, top four at least. And. He had a great start, but at the back, they were going up the hill, and then some of the drivers, I think it was Hixie and Synchronously, who side by side up the, hall, up the wall, up the hill, sorry. I think there was a bit of contact there, and because of that, there was a pile up at the back, which has caused those cars, Hixie, to be retired from the session, as well as Synchronously went, uh, off, tra well, went off at turn 12. Um... But yeah, it's just manic stuff. Whatever happens here tonight. But fair play to Luke Bailey, who's d driven a magnificent race. So he himself and uh, Sab would be my drivers of the day. I can't pick out of them two. I mean, Brennan's did a fantastic job to get into the top three as well. Uh, so if, if the standings are staying like it is... Luke Bailey would car would be the new drivers uh, drivers uh, leader, should we say, championship leader um, for this season. But until I get more confirmation of the standings, I don't think um, it's fair to say I'll bring the drivers in from the top three. But whatever happens tonight, it's been a it's been a good, okay race at Monaco. But I will not be surprised if next season it gets taken out. I think there's been a few issues with the Monaco track. Not just from tonight's race, but for, I think it's from the other races 
from the other leagues in general as well. But but oh, I absolutely gutted with the last last lap. It would have been a brilliant lap between Browns and Luke Bailey. F1 Richard did well to get into third. Oh, Stephen finishing in fourth place as well. But yeah, he had a great. Brennan's had a great strategy, to be fair, and he planned it well. Start on mediums and then hards, and try and go all the way to like try and balance it out with Luke Bailey, who made a mistake at the chicane section. So, fantastic stuff from there. But not fantastic stuff by hitting the chicane. But you know what I mean, like as in, uh, brilliant battle. I mean, Brennan's would be my driver there as well. It's tough. It's like those three drivers who have picked. Luke Bailey, Brennons and Saab. It's hard for me to pick one. So I'll put them three as the drivers of the day uh, to make it as all fair as possible because Saab did the biggest moves and then also... Oh, okay. Right, I've been clarified now, just before I stop the stream. I've been clarified the results are confirmed so Luke Bailey has won the the the, the race at uh, Monaco Grand Prix based on nine, at least 90 to 95 percent of the races of the race itself. So Luke Bailey has won the uh, Monaco Grand Prix. Um, yeah, Luke Bailey's won the, the Grand Prix. Brennan's finishes in second place after he would have got first if he had he had a chance to try and get past uh, Luke Bailey at the end. And F1 Richard, I believe, finished in third. Oh, Stephen finished in fourth. Saab finished in fifth. Oh, Nigel Gash finishes in sixth. And I believe that's it. But I, I will not pick them in. I'm not picking the driver soon because uh, just have to wait to see what happens. But I'm going to have to shoot off now. So cheers for that guys, cheers for oh, Stephen for clarifying of the results because I wasn't sure what was going to happen but thank you very much mate. Thank you to all that was watching the stream um, and cheers for that guys, much appreciated and always remember, always, always, always remember, stay classy. I'll see you later guys, take care of yourselves, I'll speak to you soon, take care of yourselves, bye bye.